Suppose we have two people, Alice and Bob. Now, Alice and Bob are undercover agents, and Alice wants to send a message to Bob. She takes out a sheet of paper, and she writes her message. Bob, run. My cover is blown. Alice. Now, this is written in plain text, meaning that anyone can read it. So she encrypts the message so that it looks like gibberish. We call this the ciphertext. Now, she's going to send the message off to Bob, but you must always assume that an enemy can intercept this message. And our enemy in this case is Eve. They both open the message and they see the gibberish. Now Bob, having the key, meaning that he knows how Alice encrypted her message, can decrypt it. And he can get the original message. Bob, run, my cover is blown, Alice. Eve, not knowing the key, can't decrypt it, and she's left with the message that looks like gibberish. So how did Alice encrypt her message? She used what we call the Caesar cipher, originally used by Julius Caesar to send confidential messages. Now the way the Caesar cipher works is we have our plain text alphabet. This is the alphabet we use to write our messages. And then we have the cipher text alphabet. This is the alphabet we use when we encrypt our messages. Now the Caesar cipher works by shifting all the letters. In this case, A goes to D, meaning that if you see A anywhere in your original message, you replace those A's with D's, meaning that B will be replaced with E, C replaced with F, D replaced with G. And you keep going until you get to the end of the alphabet. So W goes to Z. But what about X, Y, and Z? They have to wrap around to the beginning of the ciphertext alphabet. So X go to A. Y goes to B and Z goes to C. But this can be annoying, especially if we use different shifts. For example, if A goes to K or if A goes to P. I don't want to do this every time and draw those lines. So we have our plain text and ciphertext alphabet. Now the ciphertext alphabet's on the bottom, and what I would like to do is if A is going to be encrypted to D, I would like to have D right below the A. So take the ciphertext alphabet and shift it so that A is now above D. Now I do this because now it's easy for me to encrypt messages. A now goes to D and I just have to go, the correspondence goes straight down. B goes to E, C goes to F, it's very easy for me to use. So let's go back to her original message, Bob, run, my cover is blown, Alice. So Bob will go to E, and you can notice that I just go straight down from plain text to cipher text. O goes to R, B goes back to E, R goes to U, U goes to X, N goes to Q, and so on. And you keep doing this until you're done with the message. And the message is going to read something like, Ear you pee fry you. All right, it will sound like gibberish. So what happens if I wanted to, if I got the message and I wanted to decrypt it? So let's reverse it and let's put the cipher text on top. So if I wanted, if I was given the E and I knew the shift, notice that E will go back to B. R goes to O. E goes to B u goes to r, and so on. And you keep doing this until you get your final message. Bob, run, my cover is blown. So let's say she wanted to send the message by using a different key. In this case, it's going to look like this, which is different than the other ciphertext we used. So how are we going to decrypt it? We decrypt this using what we call a cipher disk. So I have my cipher disk here. Now the way that this works is the outside of the disk is the plain text. The inside of the disk is the cipher text. So when you're encrypting messages, you, you go th basically this way, come from outside in, and I put the cipher disk wording here so you know that the inside is the cipher text. So let's take a look at the message that Alice sent. Now this is, this is already encrypted, okay? Um, so when we set this up and we're shifting, 
if I encrypt A to B, which is a, a shift of 1, that means B gets decrypted back to A, and C gets decrypted back to B. So with this shift, take a look, we have G, T, G. So G, where's G at? There it is. G goes to F, and T, T will go to S. So let's see what happens when we decrypt it. So we got F, S, F. It's still gibberish, which meant that this shift of 1, Alice did not use. So let's say we did a shift of 2. Let's decrypt it. And then we have E, R, E. That's not going to work either. Uh, let's go to the Caesar shift. We know that's not going to work, but let's check it out anyways. So that means G, based on this, G is going to go to D. And again, gibberish. Let's go a couple more. Let's encrypt A to E, so we have a shift of 4. Uh, again, gibberish. Let's try one more. A is going to be encrypted to F, so a shift of 5. And we have our, we have our message, Bob, run, my cover is blown. Now, there are 26 total keys because there are 26 letters. Now, the first one, which is... A encrypting to A doesn't really make sense because then your plain text and cipher text will be exactly the same thing. So there are actually 25 keys that actually change your plain text. So again, A to B, and, and you can just keep doing this. Now, if you wanted to check all 25, or technically 26, you can. But that's going to take a while. But not by hand, it's going to take a while. Is this a good encryption technique? Maybe if you're sending a message to a friend and you don't want your parents to know. But uh, sending secret messages, it's not that great because there's only 25 things to check. So you can write a program, which I did, I called Auto Decrypt, which will take my message or Alice's message and it'll check it against all, tw it'll actually check it against all 26 keys. So notice that here's my original message or the original ciphertext. Uh, but there are 25 additional ones. Now because Alice's uh, cover was blown, I probably know that she'll sign her messages Alice. So I can do a quick little search here and search for Alice and you can see that Alice shows up right here and that's actually the only thing that looks like regular uh, English here. Everything else is gibberish. So Bob run my cover is blown.